Open up Luke chapter 19. We're going to begin reading in verse 1 and go all the way to 10. So let's see if you can keep up and get your spiritual exercise in your reading tonight. We'll stimulate your mind and we'll talk to your heart. Luke 19 verse 1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans. And he was rich. Isn't that interesting? He said he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was. Here's a rich man who's not saved, and he's trying to find Jesus because he wants to know about him. He's inquiring. And it said he could not see for the press because he was little of stature. In other words, there were so many people around Jesus, he couldn't get to him. And because he was so short, he couldn't see over top of him. And verse 4 says, And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, somebody say the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide in thy house. And he had made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when he saw it, they were all murmuring, saying that he was gone to be with a guest with a man that was a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and save that which was lost. I want to talk to you from my heart for a few moments on this subject. Get into position. Can somebody say, get into position? That was a little weak. I only heard two of those. Try it again. You're slow, but you're worth waiting on. Come on, say, get into position. position. I want you to understand that your position determines your ability to receive from God. I'm so glad I've got an ex-football coach here because there's one thing he taught me, and that's about being at the right place at the right time to make the right things happen. And that what you have to do is you come together in the huddle. That's what church is. You put your hands together. You, get, you develop a game plan. Then you go out, and everyone gets into position according to the place that they were previously assigned. And, and, and because of that, if we have two people, physics tells us that two entities cannot occupy the same space, right? In other words, I can't be standing here, and you can't be standing at the exact same spot. So the problem is, is that if we all try to be at the same spot, we're going to have a breach in our line. We'll have a breach in our defense. And ultimately, we will cause chaos so that when the ball is snapped in life, when things are beginning to come together, we're going to be running around bumping into each other because we just don't know our place. Somebody say get into position. It's very important to get into position. We read about Zacchaeus. How many heard this story in Sunday school? Yes. You've heard a little bit about Zacchaeus. We even have a little uh, uh, Easter song that you wish to sing. You know, uh, Zacchaeus, you come down from there, from coming to your house today, that type of thing. Because he was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He was a hobbit size, I guess you could say. And in this man named Zacchaeus, he was very rich. He was a tax collector. And all the adults said, oh, me. He worked for the IRS. His job was to work for the oppressive government, the same government that the Jews despised because they were oppressing, if not just anyone, but particularly the Jews. In other words, the Jewish people looked at this man who represented their arch enemy, their arch rival. He was the Darth Vader of the land. Can somebody say amen? We're trying to make it understood. In other words, he was not well liked at all, not only because of his profession, but because the manner that he would uh, get his great riches. And it said he was rich, and they had a problem with that. And I found anybody that's poor generally has a problem with rich people. I don't know why it is. If anything, it excites me because if you can do it, I can do it too. But that's beside the point. They had a problem with this man. He was short in stature, and they didn't like him. He didn't have a good reputation with the people he was around. He was a sinner. Somebody say sinner. And Jesus came to town, and he wanted to seek Jesus. Now, I'm really going to find out how much you love me when I say this one. But I love you anyway, and this is why I'm saying it. Here's a sinner trying to get to Jesus, and he couldn't get to Jesus for all the Christians. I I should have waited and put that one in at the end. I've done lost the rest of you, the whole rest of the service, didn't I? I know we don't want to hear it, but okay, let's put it this way. Here's a sinner. He needs to get healed, and he's coming to the prayer line, but can't get through because there's too many Christians there. Okay, let's try it a different way. Here's a sinner, and he's in the hospital, and he's believing for somebody just to come by and witness to him, but there's no one to come by because they're going to all the Christians. 
Going to all the Jews. It said there was a great press, a great crowd around Jesus. And it causes me to wander and, and have to be able to, to look at my own life. Because could my life be stopping somebody from seeing Jesus because I'm so infatuated with trying to become like him that I'm not becoming like him. I'm trying to do like him. And there's a big difference in doing and becoming. And I'm concerned as Christians, as the church, that we get so caught up in the, the theatrics of church and praise and worship and emotions and feelings that we get to the point that when people come in we're oblivious to the fact that someone sitting next to us might be hurting because we're so caught up with God I want to feel you right now we get so caught up in the grocery store with, with well I've got to get to church that we forget to take time that the person in the parking lot who has a dead car battery and we've got some jumper cables we can't take time to jump off their car because God forbid we're late for church am I telling you to be late for church by no means but I am telling you you've got to be sensitive because there's more to this thing than just church there's more than this thing and just, than just following Jesus where he goes there's more than that what it comes down to is we've got to be sensitive to those around us because we could be blocking them getting their breakthrough because we're so uh, fired up wanting to get ours Hallelujah. are you with me yes. we got you interested yes. it says he was a short man and nobody liked him and he couldn't get to Jesus for the press or for the crowd because the crowd pressed so much around him and this describes even many people that are Christians because of his stature he couldn't get in because of his height physically he couldn't get in and many people have a problem getting to Jesus because they see themselves so much smaller than what God called them to be. And I really wish I had some honest people because if we surveyed it, self-esteem issues and low self-esteem is one of the most horrible illnesses you'll ever have emotionally because it will steal and rob from your life. And here you are with the potential to do anything and become anything and you'll always live your life less than uh, under the level that God called you to live because you can't see that you have anything valuable on the inside of you. Zacchaeus was a man that was short in stature but it takes it a step further it says that because of his reputation he couldn't get around them or he couldn't go through them and for some people you have a problem getting to Jesus because in your mind you think because nobody likes you you can't be used by God because no one's supporting you you can't get there because no one is lifting you up and you don't have anyone to gird you or hold your back up that through the process you can't get to Jesus and I believe he's calling us to be more than that to eliminate excuses that it doesn't matter how how we see ourselves we can still get to them if we want to it doesn't matter who doesn't like us or who doesn't support us or who talked about us or who did walk to us as a child or who didn't do this to us growing up or who wasn't there for us or maybe we didn't have a mother or a father to speak into us or maybe our uncle or aunt did something bad to us growing up whatever the process is we can still get to Jesus if we want to because here's a man that had everything that was going for him in the opposite direction people didn't like him he was too short to get there but it said that he ran ahead because he knew where Jesus was going to be. Here's a group of people that's caught up in the moment because Jesus was there. But here's a man that had a mindset that said it's not enough to know where he is now. I need to understand where he's going. I really wish I had some help in here tonight because God is calling us not to be so oblivious to the fact that he is here. Not to be so oblivious to the fact that his presence is here and we can fill him in worship and we can fill his word and it impacts and it does things in our life. But the most important thing is God is here where is he going if you want to be successful in anything in business whatever it is they will always teach you in the secular environment you have to be one step ahead of the game in other words if you can look at the trend and the pattern of things and understand the direction that things are headed and stay one step ahead of the game you will always have a job People are looking for, for, our employers are looking for people that have solutions not to the problems of today, but the problems that will come for tomorrow. And if you can understand that, that's a very fine way for you to maintain the current job you have and even get promoted. That's a side note. I, you didn't even know you were going to get that, did you? I promise, if you can bring solutions to problems and understand where things are going in that direction, you will always be successful in everything. And, it, and, it, and it, it's a, it doesn't really surprise me, but it excites me. Because here's a man outside the church that knew that, but the church didn't know that. Is there something wrong with that picture? Can I just get somebody to say amen on that? As you know, I'm telling the truth tonight. Whether you like me or not, I'll just look you right in the eye. Because I got to go home tonight, and you do too, and I'm praying you come back Sunday. But if you don't, maybe you, this is not the place for you. Because if you can't sit under strong word, if you can't understand that this is not the place for me to tell you that you're all right because you're not. All right. This is not the place for you to come if you want to stay in the same situation that you're in. 
I promise you. Because I refuse to talk to you where you are, but I will forever speak to you.